Hi everyone, and welcome to this chapter of Dart Crash Course. In this chapter, we're going to talk about custom operators. And custom operators kind of blend in the concept of extensions and operators at the same time. And a lot of people seem to be having problems spe specifically with operators when you define them yourselves and also extensions. So it's like doubly difficult for some people to perhaps grasp. So I'm going to try to do my best to explain the concepts as much as I can and uh, without going going overboard. And uh, so I just want to mention that there may be like a lot of explanation about how custom operators actually work and what their pur purpose actually is. So for those of you who are already familiar with this, it may be a little bit like um, duplicate information that you've already received from before, but I'm trying to do my best to ensure that these videos uh, fit a purpose of being appealing for both um, intermediate and kind of like advanced uh, developers. So uh, let's get started like we usually do. And I'm going to bring up um, terminal. Let's see if we can bring it up here. And I've also pushed the code previously for the make sense chapter. So for those of you who are um, into grabbing the code, maybe from GitHub, you're more than welcome to just so actually let's see where it is. It is in uh, this repository. So uh, it's my username and then YouTube course Dart Crash Course Public. Uh, so the mixins uh, code is also checked in. Let's create the uh, project for this um, for this chapter. So we're going to say Dart create with a template of console, and we're going to say um, what should we call it? Custom operators, perhaps like this. And I don't think we need any kind of package, so let's just go to custom operators and open up Visual Studio Code. Going to get rid of the terminal from there and let's go to our workspace json with the zoom level of six i believe we've done so far and the usual dance in here delete the first dart file that's created for us and we're just going to say example one dart uh, main function of, of course we're gonna add our fs watch in here fs watch and then example one all right so let's get get rid of the terminal as well and start with the first example so Custom operators are kind of like functions. They, I mean, there are also different types of operators. Um, we've already talked about operators from another chapter. So if you've not watched the video about operators, I really suggest that you go ahead and do that. So custom operators is the ability for you to add functionality to Dart so that an existing operator, such as like the plus or the minus sign, can work in the way that you want. Let's say that in the world of integers, one plus one is two. Uh, however, in the case of a class, let's say family member, let's say we have a class called family member. And in the world of family member instances, two family members plus together, perhaps creates a family, right? So if you have a family member who's a mother, and another family member who's a father, and you say, okay, mother plus father, you could then create an instance uh, family and put those members in it like this. Okay. So now this is pseudocode. Okay. But you get, you get the point. So when you get to custom operators, just think of, okay, they get input and they produce an output. What should those inputs and output outputs be? The inputs are kind of like where you create your operator on. So let's say that two family members, that is the input. Then you're custom op operator should basically work on family member. So it's an operator that takes the current uh, family member and pluses it with another family member. So that another could be a parameter um, that is passed to your operator, operator. And then the output could be a an instance of a class, for instance, called family. All right. So without further ado, let's actually start creating an example in here. So you see what I'm talking about. Let's say final string name. Uh, and of course, we're going to create a, a constructor here, a required name parameter. Okay. So we have a family member. And let's say that we add two string to this. So override. And the two string, let's in here say family member. And we say name is equal to dollar name. So this is just simple stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and create a family. So we say a family is just a simple class that is built out of a list of members. Okay, so class family. And then we say, oh, this is all right, this is 
exactly what I've written actually in my own example. So I'm just going to accept the suggestion from GitHub Copilot. So it was pretty, pretty nice. Um, the only thing I will change in these examples really is just to go and change this to a cons constructor and another cons constructor in here, perhaps. Okay. So you can see a family class instance would then contain a list of members. Okay. So now what I, what I think when I, for instance, what I think about when I start uh, contemplating creating an operator is that, okay, I first thing, what should my operator, operator do? I'm going to say, okay, I want two family members plus together to create a family. Then I know that my operator should actually be created on the family member class. Okay. So I start by creating an extension on a family member. So I I'm saying like, okay, I'm saying extension on family member. Then here, since extensions in Dart can have names, then I think, okay, what should this be called? I'm creating a family out of two family members. So let's just call it two family. So I'm basically saying a family member, its extension is two family. So it's just like as if I'm family. Have I written it correctly as well? Yes. It's kind of like, yeah, this is just the name of the extension. Not too much explanation needed. Okay. Then what you need to think about is that, okay, here I'm going to create an operator and it is a function. What does it return? Well, it returns a family. Okay. And then I say, oh, well, it's an operator. And what is the name of the op operator? It is a plus sign. Okay, good. So I'm on a function now that is created on an instance of family member. So inside this operator, the this keyword is actually an instance of family member. Okay, so I'm think I'm thinking here. Okay, this is a, an instance of family member, and the parameter also that is passed to this operator, I want it to be a family member. Okay, so I'm saying family member. Okay, so now I have this and other using these two instances of family member, I have to create a, an instance of family. So that is very easy. I'm, I'm just going to say, okay, I create an instance of family and members parameter here should be uh, an array of this and the other, just like that. Okay. So you can see now this operator is created for us very, I mean, it's not created for us. We created it, <laughs> yeah, but you can see it's just a function pretty much. Okay. And it's an error function right now, but it doesn't necessarily have to be an error function. You can just create it just like a normal function in here with curly brackets. Okay. So how do we use this function now? Well, this, uh, as you can see in here, since it's a function that is created on family member and it takes in a family member, it's an infix operator. So it's basically saying member plus member two, something like this. Okay. So what happens is that in this case, if someone types like member one plus member two, Dart says, okay, these two are family members. Is there an operator that operates between family members? Then it says, yes, actually it's this function. So this, like the, the member one variable is going to be the, this keyword, which is right here. Okay. Within this context and plus member, when we say plus member, member two, sorry, plus member two, member two is going to be other. Okay. So in this context, inside this function, this is going to refer to the first parameter to the left hand side of the operator and the other, which is the parameter that's passed to this function is going to be the right hand side of this operator. So let's get rid of this. We've talked now a lot about like the concepts. Let's, let's have a look at uh, an example. So I'm just going to bring in uh, like two family members in here, name, dad, and another one, mom. All right. And then I'm just going to say their family, <laughs> final family. All right. is going to be equal to dad plus mom. There we go. So without our, and you can see that the result of this is a family. So how did this work? So Dart understood that there is an operator that is between uh, the family members and it creates a family. All right. And you can actually do this. I think in Visual Studio Code, you can select this plus in here and then right click on it and say, go to definition. And it takes you to the function that defines it. All right. So there we go. We got the family and you can print it to the console like this, print family. All right. And have a look at the terminal. And you can see we have two family members. Here's a family. It has two members. One is a dad and another one is a mom. Okay. So that was our first example. Let's Close this guy in here and create example two like this. Okay. And we do the usual dance. So we have our uh, main function and let's go to terminal and say we are running example two, just like that. Okay. So that was the first example. Now 
You can also define uh, operators on many other different types of data. So here's going to be another example. It's not anything revolutionary, but it's just an, another example of a custom operator. So you need to just ensure that you practice adding these um, extensions that define new operators that, uh, for instance, add plus, minus, multiply, etc. on uh, existing data types. So let's go in here and say we have an extension. We call it times. OK, so we want to what we want to do in this example is to multiply an I treble uh, by, for instance, uh, two or three or five. So let's say we have uh, names. We say names is uh, Seth. Uh, we have Kathy, Ethan and Megan. Oh, well, these are actually quite good names. And let's say we want to say print names twice. So what does what should this do? You can see this uh, this operator at the moment doesn't exist. It's like multiplying an I treble by an integer. So this doesn't exist in default Dart. We can go ahead and implement that though. So then I think, okay, this new operator, what should it operate on? It's gonna be it's gonna be on a list. Okay, so this is kind of like like a list, or you could also say, well, a list is an I trouble. So I could perhaps go ahead and create my uh, extension on an I triple. Okay, so let's let's do that. Let's say extension on I triple. Okay. However, I triple, uh, we know that the result of this should be at the same I, I triple type. Okay, like this is a list of string. And the result of this uh, operator, <laughs> it's kind of difficult to say operator, operator fast, it, it just becomes like a mishmash of operator. It's very difficult for me to say it very slow, uh, sorry, very fast. So I'm just try, gonna try to say it very slow from now on, okay? So that it doesn't become like some sort of an abstract word. So if we try to multiply it by two, it should just say Seth, Kathy, Ethan, Megan twice. All right, so it should be an I triple that is an I triple of string. So the result of multiplying a, a list of string by an integer should actually be a list of string, okay? What I'm trying to say in here is that I triple itself is a generic class. So in order for us to return an instance that is of that generic type, we should constrain this extension. So we should say, okay, we're creating an extension on I triple of type T. Okay, and we're gonna name our uh, extension, we're gonna call it times T. Okay, in this way, when we name our extension with a generic data type on a generic class, this T then we have control over. So in here we can say we return an I triple T. Now we have access to T. Okay. So without this named uh, extension, we wouldn't be having access to T. Good. So now, now we have access to T and we know that our I triple, sorry, our operator should return an instance of I triple of T. So let's say, well, the result is an I triple of T. We know it's an operator, so let's say operator, and then it's kind of difficult again to say it very, um, very fast. And then we say it's a, it's a multiply, uh, basically function. And you can see as soon as I type multiply, Dart became quiet here. So it's not throwing an error, error anymore because it, it, it understands that, okay, multiplication, you're defining it, okay? Then we say, okay, what do we multiply this I trouble with? we're multiplying it by an integer. So let's accept that as an integer. So we say int times, all right? And of course, this suggestion by GitHub Copilot was correct, but I didn't want to pollute our workspace with excessive code. So let's think about it. It's it's returning an I trouble. And one of the uh, plus signs of this, one of the good things about this is that we can use uh, synchronous generators in Dart to return an instance of I trouble. So by marking your function with sync asterisk, you can easily just, for instance, say yield this, like this, yield this. <laughs> so you're basically returning an instance of this. Okay. So what you could do is you're pretty much in, in here saying um, that uh, we're, we're okay. Let's let's actually do it like this. So if 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 I call this multiply by two uh, and pass this i trouble in here, then our function is returning this i trouble twice. However, remember we have a parameter in here that says times. So here the the user could say three. 
but we can't just go ahead and change that because this is a parameter that we have to uh, oblige by. So let's say we create a, an array, uh, sorry, a loop, and you can see, see in here we say var i, i less than times, and then increment i, and then for every time this loop, uh, every time we go into this loop, then we yield an instance of this. Okay, so if we say print names multiplied by two, you can then see in the results, we have the same iterable or list printed to the console uh, for every time uh, of this times parameter, basically. We could also say multiply by, oops, we could also say multiply by one and then see what the result is. You can just see that instance is printed once to the console. So, um, and it, uh, to be honest with you, it has nothing to do with printing it once. It has to do with this, that we actually creating a new iterable. So let's say result is names times three. And you can see now this is an iterable of string because it understood that the original list was an iterable of string. And again, list is an iterable. So that's why I say iterable string. Okay. So we can then print the result to the console and you can see it's the same array uh, basically repeated three times. Okay. And that was for example two. Let's just close this and go to example three then. There we go. I'm just going to close this file. Let's create example three like this, the main function. And of course, we're going to go ahead in here and say example three dart. Okay, the usual dance. Good. Now let's create an operator between two optional integers. And this is this is one of the more complicated examples of creating custom operators. Okay. And in here, simply because we're kind of like adding generics in this particular example, and there's generics uh, in play, we have extensions in play, we have optionality in play. So there's kind of like lots of moving parts that are connected to each other. And this is one of the reasons that are that I've already covered optionals before and I've already covered, uh, I think operators before as well. And I think we've already also covered extensions, to be honest, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I should kind of look at my notes. And I can see actually, we haven't really covered extensions in a separate chapter yet. And uh, funny enough, extensions chapter is going to be right after this chapter. So um, it is just a little bit. Uh, it's Yeah, it's just what it is. It, I mean, they have kind of like, dependency is kind of like a circular dependency. This chapter requires uh, op operators and it requires extensions, knowledge and generics. And next chapter requires this chapter. So it's kind of like they, they require each other. So one has to essentially come from, uh, sorry, come before the other one. So that's just the way it is. So in the, just so you know, in the next chapter, we're going to talk a lot about extensions. But for now, let's just let's just go with the flow and kind of try to understand how extensions work. But if you're kind of getting stuck at the concept of extensions, because I, I've heard from a lot of devel developers that this is one of the main issues that they have, they don't just understand how extensions work. But if, if that is you don't worry about it, I'm going to explain extensions in details in the next chapter. Okay, so let's go in this example. And as I said, there's generics involved. So don't get scared. Uh, generics are not that difficult. And there is a reason that they exist. They make your code actually more usable, actually more reusable, I would say. So uh, don't shy away from generics is my um, advice. So let's go ahead in here and create a um, let's create an operator that operates between two integers that each one of them could be null. So let's say that we have an int in here and we say value, okay, and we say value is equal to 20. Let's say like this, and then we have another value too. And we say this is equal to 30. And we say final result is value one plus value two. Okay. Now in this case, let's see in here, uh, let's go into a function. So let's say void blah. It takes two parameters, okay, value one and value two, and both are um, they're nullable or they're optional. And then in here, we just want to say, okay, get the result of plusing value one and value two. So we say result is value one plus value two. And you can see in here, this op operator is not defined. And the reason behind it is that Dart doesn't understand, okay, you're saying this is nullable. And this one is also nullable. How am I supposed to add these two together? This value one could be null. This value two could be null, or both could be null. How do you want me to calculate this result? 
I could re uh, reason that, okay, well, if value one is null, but value two is not null, then the result of plussing these two should be equal to value two. Exactly in the same way, if value two is null, but value one is not null, then the result of adding these two should be value one. If both values are, are null, the result of this addition should be zero. And if none of these values are null, then the result of these additions should just be value one plus value two. Okay, so that is the operator that we're going to create here. So let's say, okay, then we're going to think, okay, this operator, it's going to be on integers, right? Because we're actually um, adding integers. However, not just normal integers. We want this uh, operator to work on optional integers. Okay, interesting. So let's say extension. Let's give it a name and we say uh, nullable add. And then we say, okay, this nullable add, what should it operate on? It's on any number, right? So it could even be double. Like if this these two were double, uh, it should still work, this operator. So we say, okay, it should be actually on num, all right? So it should be on numbers. However, in order for our function to be able to return a generic value, like if we give it optional integers, then it should return optional integers. But if it give if what if we give it optional doubles, it should return an optional double. How do we do that? We can't just say that we're operating on num, and in here we just say we return a num. Okay, because then our function is literally gonna return num as an instance of num not an instance of int or double, okay? So we want a function that if we give it integers, it returns integer. If we give it doubles, it returns double. And the, and the answer to that question, how do we do it? The answer to it is using generics. So we say, okay, wait a minute. We want to return something, okay? And actually we want to return, we want our op operator to be working on optionals of that something, right? Okay, not just on that something, not just on double, but we want this plus operator to work on optional doubles, optional integers. So that's where this is coming from. Now Dart is saying, okay, well, I see what you're trying to do in here, but I don't really understand what T is. So what is T? Is it on just optional anything? Is it just, because the way we've written it so far, it's like, yeah, operate on optionals of anything because this T has no meaning in here, okay? So let's give T a meaning. Let's say this T has to be a number. How do we do that? How do we constrain? And again, remember, I'm gonna explain all of this in a lot of details in the next chapter when we talk about extensions. So for now, let's just say, okay, we wanna give T a meaning. So let's open this less than and greater, greater than sign in here. And let's say T should come from num. You see, so we said T is a number, okay? and given a number of type, for instance, double or integer, we are going to return double or integer. Okay. So let's go in here and say, we say, and we return an optional T. We're operating on optional T's and we're returning optional T's. Okay. Then we say we are an operator and our sign is a plus sign. And we take in another optional of the same data type. So if the left hand side is an optional integer, then the right hand side, which is this other should also be an optional integer. Okay, if the left hand side is an optional double, the right hand side should be the same thing. So in other words, we're not pretty much allowing you to do, for instance, plussing between optional double or optional integer, or are we? Let's test it out. Okay, so let's create a, the body for this. Let's go ahead and get a shadow of this. So let's say final shadow, uh, or let's say this shadow is equal to this. And the reason we do this uh, in extensions, specifically on optional extensions, is that Dart has this type of type promotion. So it understands type promotion, meaning that if you say, if uh, this is not null, then in this case, this shouldn't be null 
inside this if statement. However, type promotion inside extensions specifically using this keyword doesn't work so well in Dart, unfortunately. So even if you check that this is not null in here inside this block, Dart doesn't understand that this is not null. So you have to first create a shadow variable. So it's kind of like a variable that tracks uh, or it's just like a copy of this variable kind of. OK, so we say final, not really a copy. I wouldn't say copy It's actually the same as this variable. So let's say this shadow is equal to this. And then we say if this is uh, null or other is null, OK, then we return null. OK, so basically what I mentioned before that, OK, we're going to return zero, maybe just for now, return null in case both are null. OK, otherwise, we're going to say uh, otherwise return uh, this shadow plus other and then we type cast into T. So, I mean, you can extend upon this. So what we've done right now is that both need to be present. All right. So you could change this logic. Let's just go ahead and actually do this. You know, let's change this logic to this is what we want to do. We want to say, uh, if left, if this is null, sorry, if this is not null and other is null, return this. If this is null and other is not null, then return other. If this and if this is null, uh, and other is null, then return zero. And then we say, if this is not null and other is not null, return this plus other. So this is the logic we want to implement. Okay. So let's go ahead and say, if this is not null, pretty much what we've written up here and other is null, then you can see we're returning this. Okay. And we could change this to be honest with you to say that the result is never optional. Should we do that? Let's do that. Now, now I'm kind of like diverging. Um, and then we say as T. All right. Uh, and then we say um, else. So let's do the next case. Now we say else if uh, this is null and other is not null, then we say return other. Let's do the next case and we say uh, else if this is null and other is null, then we return zero as T. Otherwise, then we say return this, uh, actually, let's say uh, a value of type num can't be returned from the method plus. Okay, I think we have to do the whole thing as t as well. And I wonder if we need these as t's uh, that GitHub Copilot was suggesting. Let's just remove this. And again, I'm sorry about this. It's just I'm experimenting as well a little bit because the code that I'd written in my example was a little bit different from the requirements that I mentioned in the beginning. All right. So I hope this code kind of makes sense. Let me just go through it one more time together. So uh, if the value we're operating on is not null, but the other one that we're getting on the right hand side of the operator is null, then of course we have to return this. If this is null, basically the left hand side of the operator <laughs> and the right hand side is not null, then take the right hand side. If both are null, then just return zero. And if none of them are not are null, then plus them together. Okay, so let's see what happens in here. Let's just test this out. So let's say that we remove this function from here. And then we create a simple add function, which re which returns the result of this plus. And the reason behind this is a little bit difficult to explain. I'll do my best though. If in Dart, you go ahead and try to play with some variables that are nullable, but you force feed them values, then Dart starts complaining that saying that, oh, wait a minute, this is, you're saying that this is nullable, but it's not really a null value. You're putting like a normal integer in a nullable value. Just turn it into a normal. Yes. Like it really complains a lot because it's doing static analysis of the values that we're passing inside like um, variables. And it starts to deduce like whether those variable types are actually good enough or not. And in order to go around these static analysis rules, what you can do is to create a function that uh, refers to this operator. OK, so we're going to say, OK, we have a function called add and then we take two parameters int optional int a and optional int b. And the result of it is just this the plussing oper operator. So let's go in here and we say go to definition and you can see it jumps here to this function. OK, so now that we have this function, we can just start passing arguments to it. 
and let's just see how our example works. I'm kind of like anxious about this because I've not really tested this myself either. So let's go and start with a very simple example of printing. And we say add with no parameters in here. So these two are by default nullable values and they're going to be past null in here. So if we've done our code correctly, then we should get to this case. So we should get zero. Let's see if that works. There we go. So two null values plus together returns zero. Now let's go to the next example. Let's, let's say that we pass one and null. If we've done our work correctly, so the left hand side, which is this in this context is not null. So let's see where we've written this. And that is here. So we're saying if this is not null, but the other, meaning the right hand side of the operator <laughs> is null, then we get to this case. So we return this and we should just return one. Let's see if it works. Uh, there we go. And you can change this to 10 if you want to, whatever you want to. Okay. Now let's print and uh, we say null. Uh, so the left hand side is going to be null, but the right hand side is not going to be null. And we get the value of 20. And of course, the fourth example is when both these values are not null. And then and that, that's very interesting. Now we're getting an exception. So what is happening in here? Stack overflow. And I can I, I kind of understand what is happening. And the reasoning behind this is that um, what we're seeing in here is like a this plus sign uh, is unfortunately calling the same function again. So uh, here is the problem. So this plus sign, if you actually select it and say, go to definition, I believe you can see it's going to our own function because it says both of these are kind of like nullable values. Okay. So let's create a shadow out of this. So that is why we need the shadow. So let's say final, this shadow is equal to this. And then we say, if this shadow else, if this shadow is not null, all right, and other is not null, then we say return this shadow plus the other. And this is the reason because Dart couldn't promote this, uh, like the this keyword to a non null value, even though uh, all branches of this code indicate at the end that by reaching this else statement, this should not be null. So Dart has some problem promoting a this keyword to non null, unless you create a local variable that refers to this and um and then use that when you're doing your comparisons with null it's just some it's just one of the quirks of dart that you need to get used to unfortunately okay and now we're getting a little bit of a problem in here so let's go ahead and see what the problem is and that's because dart un doesn't understand that we've actually resolved all the cases it does the static analysis doesn't understand that it's one of we're definitely going to fall into one of these cases. Okay. You can see that we have a an else if in case both are null, we're returning zero. So what we could do is to take this statement from here, like this, and bring it down here and say else without any of this, just return zero. And then Dart's going to be happy that all paths in this code uh, are definitely returning a value. So we're definitely not reaching a point where this function doesn't return a value. So let's test our application now. And we have to rerun FSWatch and then save the file. And now you can see we're getting the value of 30 uh, for the last example as well. Okay. So this was quite a complicated example. I completely understand that, but it's kind of necessary to do these uh, examples in order to understand extensions and also custom operators. I'm, try I'm really trying to say operators slowly so that I don't, I don't say it too fast and it becomes kind of like, because when I say fast, it becomes like operators. And it's like, what, what, what does that even mean? So let me try to say it a little bit slowly. Okay. Let's go to example four, example four dot dart. And then we say main. And of course, FS watch in here uh, of example four, just like that. And we can then get rid of the terminal. Okay. Now in this example, we're going to do something a little bit more fun and a lot less code. But still, it's really fun. So what we're trying to do is to say, let's say you have a foo bar, okay, and then you say minus foo. That'd be cool, right? Like if you if you could just minus a string 
from another string. So you can subtract and remove all instances of foo from the string. So if this said foo bar foo bar, baz foo, then minus foo, it should say, okay, I'm gonna take this string and put it here. Then whenever I see foo, I'm just gonna remove it like this, remove it and remove it. So the result should be this. Okay, so this would be a very fun operator to do. So let's go ahead and say we create an extension, we call it remove and we say, well, our extension is on a string, right? So let's say, well, the result of this extension, sorry, the result of this operator is, um, let's say a string, right? Um, and then we say, oh, it's, it's a minus and it takes another string as a pr parameter because both the left hand side and the left hand side is here and the right hand side, the right hand side is here. This other is the right hand side. Both of them are strings and the result is a string. So what we're going to do in this function is very simple. We're, we're literally going to take this and issue a function on say replace all and we're going to remove this. So don't worry about it because you, sh you shouldn't use the, this keyword in Dart in vain. Uh, so whenever it doesn't have any purpose, you should remove it. And we're going to remove it. I just want to demonstrate that this function that we're calling replace all is indeed uh, called on this. So we're saying replace all instances of this other string and uh, and replace them with an empty string, as you can see in here. Okay, so let's, and you can see, I think Visual Studio Code automatically removed this. So as soon as I said save, it just removed it. Um, so just so you know, just don't write your code like this because this is not uh, needed in Dart to shadow um, um, Actually, it says avoid shadowing. That's good. So it says don't do this. Uh, this isn't necessary. So there we go. We're pretty much actually done with this example. And this this is what I meant. It's, it's, it's a little fun uh, operator that we've created on string, which we can test now. Let's go in here and say print uh, foo bar. And we say minus foo. And we can say print uh, just the string of bar minus bar. And we could say print um, let's say foo bar minus baz and see how that works. Okay. And the results are in. So foo bar, you can see minus uh, foo, it became just bar. And then there's a little space in here. And that is this space, which we are not removing, of course, bar minus bar is going to be an empty string, which is the line, the second line. And then we have the third string, which is foo bar minus baz. And that's just going to be foo bar because there's no occurrences of baz inside this string. Okay, so now we have a nice little function in here, which is doing minusing or subtraction between two strings. Fun. All right. So done with example four, let's go to example five in here. And then we go to FS watch as well. And we say we're uh, running example five. Now, you can also do the same thing that we did with um, minusing uh, strings, you can do it on um, I troubles. So let's say you have the values of one to three and you can you can say remove the values of one and two from this so the result of this should just be three okay or you could say you have one two and three and remove one two and three from it then the result should be an empty array or you could say yeah i think actually you get the point and if you in here said one two three four remove one and four then the result should be two and three okay so this is the operator that we're going to go ahead and create Okay, so let's say extension and let's call it remove as well. Since we're going to operate on uh, a generic iterable, let's give it a name of T in here, the generic parameter. And we say we're on iterable of T and we say our uh, operator returns an iterable of T, of course, as well. And we say op operator minus. Now, on the right hand side of this uh, function, um, if you remember, we said one, two, three minus three. Uh, like this. The left hand side is this, and the right hand side is also an iterable. So the parameter that we pass to our operator should also be an iterable, an iterable of t, and we call it other. Okay, so let's go ahead and now define this um, function and see how it works like this. Then we say it returns uh, this, and again, we're going to remove this. There is a function on this called where you can see where we get the element. So and basically this function, what it does, it, it iterates through the iterable and for every value inside this iterable, it calls this function. And in this function, if we return true, 
then the result of this were will be um, it, it will basically collect all these values for which inside this function we return true so if we indicate that we want this element to be present in the result of this function you can see it's it's an i triple of t then those values will be included it's kind of like compact map uh, actually not really compact map it's equal to filter in many other languages so other languages call this function filter and i think filter is actually a better name where is a little bit hmm, I don't know why Dark came came up with its own naming for this function. Every other language is calling this filter, uh, but Dark calls it where. I'm not sure why it should be so special. So in here, let's just say for elements, which elements do we want to actually uh, allow in the result? Well, we want to allow elements that are not in the other i triple. Okay, so let's go ahead and say other shouldn't contain the element like this. We say don't contain the element, all right? And then we re remove the this keyword as well. And this could be a little bit confusing, and I think it's, uh, it's actually good for you to read the documentation for these functions, but just know that we're filtering out values from this, like the this keyword, literally. Like if the left-hand side is one, two, three, then it's kind of like saying one, two, three, where, okay? So we're saying, okay, go through one, two, three, take the element of one, is one present in the other element uh, sorry in the other i triple and let's say that the, um it says no the other i triple is actually just uh, an i triple with the value of three it's not present so the result of this is false then we flip that false to true meaning that this function actually wants to keep that value so it says oh i got the value of one it wasn't available or that value was not in the other i triple so keep it then it goes to the value of two and it says is two present in the other i triple false then flips it to true meaning that this function should keep the value of two in the result so it says okay so so far i got one and two what else do we have goes to the next element or the last element says three other contains three yes it does so it's true then it says flip that true to false meaning that the where function should not keep the value of three in the result so you end up with one two in here and that's it okay let's test it, test this out so i'm gonna get rid of the terminal and let's say print actually i prepared some examples i wonder if if i should just paste them in here okay i think it's easier to paste these examples so let's say we're printing one two three minus one and two so the result should be an i triple days equal to just three okay now we also have one two three minus one two three and it actually doesn't have to be one two three like this it could be written like three one two it doesn't matter the ordering okay and let's look at the results you can see in the first example the only value to escape from this array is or from this i triple is the value of three because it's not present on the right hand side one two three minus one two three is just an empty array uh one two three minus three one two is also an empty array and foo bar baz minus baz and bar is equal to foo okay and of course you could test this just saying uh, foo bar baz minus baz and then you get uh foo and bar okay so that was another little uh, simple example of how uh, you can create custom operators okay so let's go to example six and uh, like in here and then we're gonna fs watch main function and fs watch on example six as well so in this example we're gonna create a little bit more complicated example and these things that we're going to implement in this example have already been created inside the collections package not in the same way that we're going to do them but they're kind of like um, what we're going to do is for instance we're going to add a plus uh, functionality between two maps so if you have a map of string int and another map of string int then we're going to allow you to plus them together to get the merging of those maps and then there is a function in the collections package uh, package called merge maps i believe so you could either use those or go ahead and learn how you can do it yourself okay and i, and I always think it's best to first learn how to do things yourself and then go and use someone else's code okay so let's say that we have uh, two maps okay let's say these two maps and we want to plus them together okay so this is a map of string and object i believe string or dynamic string keys because name and age are string keys and the values are string and int so it's kind of like dynamic and here we have a map of string string so how do we plus them together because right now you can't 
you can't just plus them together okay so how do we go go about plussing these hmm how do we go about plussing for instance or minusing uh, these two maps have a look here so we have a map that says name is john age is 42 and we want to minus that with this so the a result of it should just be a map that contains the name all right and so plus minus and we also want to multiply a map okay so just like we multiplied another value before i think it was a multiplication of an iterable now we want to multiply multiply a map by two for instance or three or four and we've done something similar to this before so this one shouldn't be that difficult we've done something similar to this as well and this but since it's on a map it's doubly difficult because maps are doubly generic they have generic types and ge sorry generic keys and generic values okay so let's say extension and we name it map operations and we say okay we're operating on values of key and value so we have two generic types on a map that operates on key and value okay so using this uh, generate constraint now inside this extension we have access to get any key of type k and any value of type v all right so let's say we start with the plus operator so let's say the result of that is actually the exact same thing as the left hand side which is the map kv so let's say kv and we say we are an operator that uh, is a plus the right hand side should also be the exact same map of type k and v okay and we're gonna use the spread uh, operator in here and say okay we take this and the other and we put them in the same map you see we're spreading both this and the other inside the same map all right so that is that solves this issue for us so we could literally say print uh, the result of this there we go very simple okay so and if you select this plus in here and say go to definition it jumps to our function okay similar to this we can do minus so let's go ahead and the minus actually is a little bit more difficult because what we need to do in this case is to say okay let's go through um let's go through this uh, uh these keys and values and look at this key in here name and then check if it exists in the other uh, map oh it doesn't okay so this key is fine it should be included in the result but then go to the next key oh does it exist in this yes it does and is its value the same thing as this then don't include it in the result so it's a little bit more complicated than plus because plus is just literally just spreading okay so let's go in here and say we have a map and uh, the result of this also map of kv and we say it's an operator minus um and we say okay then uh let's say the other is a map of kv as well other like this and then we could create a function an actual function in here because i think creating an arrow function in here could make it a little bit co more complicated to look at okay so let's get a copy of this first like this and then we say uh, uh, we say remove where and then we get the keys and values okay let's go like this and create another function and again i know this is really messy i mean when you look at this you'd be like oh my god i'm getting a headache what is this actually doing but don't worry about it i'm gonna try to really explain all of this but we just need to write it first and then i can explain it more okay so we're basically creating a copy of uh, the left hand side of this operator and then we say okay remove all the keys and values as long as something and we haven't defined that something in here and then we say okay if the other contains this key all right and and let's go in here and we say and the others um keys of value is equal to this uh, value like this and we return it okay like this okay uh, and then let's see what we can place in here let's return this as well contains okay contains key like this uh, and other key is value like this so let me just let me just explain what's happening in here so if we bring this example down here here i'll just put it right there okay boom now what is happening is that in in this extension uh, function in here in this operator uh, this value which is to the left hand side of the minus is this keyword so literally whenever you see this keyword take this a mental image from here and put it right there 
So the result of this spreading is literally creating a copy of this uh, map, all right, here. So we say, okay, go through this and remove items where, like this, remove items where, then the condition for that where is defining here. We say, okay, the as long remove values from this as long as the other dictionary, which is the right hand side of this operator here, as long as that dictionary contains this particular key that is coming in. So first goes to the name key and then the age key. Name key isn't existent here. So it says, oh, I'm just going to ignore this. Okay, so I'm not going to remove the name. Then it goes to age. It says, okay, age is the other map con uh, containing the age key yes it does and the other maps age keys value is equal to the same value as ours then remove that from the result of this so this is what we're doing okay so let's print this so we say we print now this and you can uh, again select this operator in here and say go to definition and you can see we end up here in our operator for uh, minusing Okay, and if we print the result of this, you can see we're only seeing the name key and its John value printed to the console. And last but not least, we also have to define this kind of operator. So multiply, multiplying a map by an integer. So multiplying a map, interesting. We are already on map. Our extension is on map. So this is our map. So we're at the right place. We don't have to go and create another extension. However, the other parameter should be an integer. Okay, so let's go ahead and say we return an iterable of our map, because if you say map multiplied by two, then it should be an iterable of map. Okay, uh, like this. And we say uh, operator in here, it's a multiplication int times uh, like this. And we say we're a synchronous generator. And I think this is a really good suggestion. This is pretty much what I wanted to do. So you can see we're going through, uh, we're creating a loop and we're yielding this uh, from our synchronous uh, generator whenever uh, the loop is happening. So then we can go and uncomment this code as well and print the results. And just to ensure that this is really our operator, I'm going to right click on it and say go to definition. And you can see that we end up in this function. All right. And let's see the results. You can see now we get an I trouble of our map that is repeated twice because of our operator. Okay. Good, we're done with example six. Let's go to, oops, I minimized. Uh, again, this is something that happens sometimes to me. Instead of command N, I press command uh, M, which is for minimizing, and command N creates a new document. So they're exactly next to each other. Uh, let's create example seven dart, main function, and fswatch, of course, our example seven in here, okay? Now, in example seven, I just want to demonstrate something. It's a little bit, it's a little bit lengthy, but it really isn't that much uh, complicated than the length kind of shows. Okay, so the purpose of this example is that custom operators don't necessarily have to work on same data type on the left hand side and the right hand side. We've already seen an example of this, to be honest with you. We've, like in example one, you saw that this operator that we created was uh, on family member actually no wait a minute this was on two family members and it created a family however on this in the last example uh example six in here we saw that our operator was uh, working on a map however its right hand side was an integer so let's just kind of like build on top of this example and demonstrate that our custom operators they don't necessarily have to have the left hand side and the right hand side the same data type okay so what i'm going to do in here is to create some classes uh, and they're called there there's going to be three classes one is a person class the other one is a pet class and another one is a family class okay so the goal of this example is to if we say a person plus another person then it's going to create a family for us okay and if we say a um a person plus a pet also creates a family for us okay and if you say a family plus a pet just creates a family with that pet in it. And we say a family plus a person creates another family for us. Okay, so it's kind of like plussing things together. This example is mainly about plussing and like anding, etc. So custom operators that work on different data types. Too much explanation. I know. Let me just show you how this example is going to work. So let's go to class person. 
and we say, okay, every person has to have a name. So you know what, actually, I'm going to copy paste these examples in here uh, because the classes, sorry, I'm not going to copy paste the examples. I'm going to copy paste the classes because they don't really contribute to this, um, to this chapter. So you can see here is a person. It has a name and a two string description that just says person's name is this very simple, nothing to do with operators. Okay. Let's go and create a similar class and we call it pet. And you can see pet also has a name very similar to person. Pet's got a name, a constant constructor and a two string. Okay. And similarly, we're going to create a family and every family has a list of members and a list of pets. So the family class is a little bit different uh, from the pet and the uh, person classes in that it has two list properties. So every family can have many members and every family can have many pets. Okay. Or zero pets lists can be empty as well. Remember that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is to say, okay, we want two operators on person. If we create a, if we take a person and a plus another person, then we want to create a family. So let's say extension on person. And we say, okay, we want to create a family. Uh, as long as we plus the current person with another person. Okay. Then we say, okay, we create a family in here. You can see it's members is this and the other. Okay. However, what we also want to do is to say, okay, well, if you take a person and you say, let's say person and pet, we want to create a family uh, that contains that person and that pet. Now you'd be saying that you probably may be thinking that, well, why don't, wait a minute, why don't we just say family operator in here and say plus pet like this? Why does that, why does this not work? And you can actually see the reason in here. Dart, unfortunately, unlike other modern languages like Swift, I, I kind of like to press this issue a little bit on the Dart team in that Dart seems to kind of be falling out of competition with most modern languages because this evolution in my opinion is a little bit too slow swift for instance allows this that you define the same oper operator with different uh, parameters right? so you overload the same exact operator many times with different parameters this is completely allowed in swift however it's not allowed in dart simply because dart says wait a minute you've already defined this operator before you can't define it again so this is one of the problems I have with Dart. I have a lot of problems with Dart, but this is one of them in that it doesn't, it can't compete with like most modern languages. And the, I think the Dart teams really need to uh, up their game with these, um, with these uh, competitions with other languages, because if Dart is to compete, for instance, with TypeScript and with JavaScript, it has to at least be on par and bring kind of like the same functionality to developers. Um, well, it's an open source project as well. And you could argue that, well, if you want this, just go ahead and add it to the language. But well, it's not as easy because then you have to know a lot of low level coding in order to bring this to Dart. Anyways, enough ranting. This is the reason you can't define the same operator with the same name in Dart. You can't overload them, unfortunately. So in this case, when we create a family out of a person and a pet, let's change this to say and. Okay. So we say, if you say a person and a pet, we create a family with that pets in it. And the member is of course this. Okay. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and define some operators on family as well. So we say extension on family. Okay. And we say, okay, if you take a family on the left-hand side and then you and a pet. So we say, if you give us a pet, then we say, we create a family whose members are, uh, this members and pets. Let's actually, let me bring these now. And the pets of that family are equal to the current family's pets and the other. So because we're operating on a family, that family could have some pets already, but we're adding a new pet to it. So we have to take the existing family's pets and add the other uh, pets that is incoming into the list of pets and then create a family out of it. Okay. And the members are coming from this members pretty much. Okay. So that's for ending a family with a pet. Now let's go ahead and plus a family with a person. This one's easy. So we're adding a new member to a family. So let's say the result is a family, the operator, uh, operator plus, actually, this is what I want our type. So I'm just going to keep it. So we're saying this is a family and we're plusing a new person to it. Then the result should be a new family 
with the current family's members and the other uh, person that we're adding in here and the pets stay the same all right so the pets no one touched the pets in this function and last but not least what we're going to do is to uh, basically merge two families so we say given a family um here if you give us a so this is a new this is an existing family on the left hand side of the operator and if you give us a new family let's just say um this operator and we say give us a new family on the other hand side then we're going to merge them so we say we create a new family where the members are the members of the current family plus the other uh, family's members okay actually let's see uh other members here this is fine and the pets are this uh family's pets and the other family's pets so we're kind of like merging them together okay so in order to get all of this to work let me just create some basic data uh in the main function like this boom boom all right so we have a mom which is a person a dad who's a person son daughter and also we have uh, whiskers who is a pet all right so let's go ahead and uh, basically add the mom and dad together and if we look at this operator that we created in here, if we add two persons together, then we create a family, right? So if I go ahead in here and type a family is mom plus dad, you can see it actually says the data type is a family because this plus operator was defined down here, okay? So if I save this and run our application, then you can see it says mom plus dad is equal to family uh, whose members are Jane and John. All right, and there are no pets in this family right now. Okay, let's now take um, this family and add whiskers to that family. So if you look at this operator that we created in here on a family, we said in order to add a pet to the family, you have to and the pet with the family. So let's say we go in here and we say final with whiskers. We take this family and we say and, uh, oops, whiskers, okay? And you can see the result is actually a family, right? Then we can print. We say mom and dad and whiskers are equal to this. Okay. And the result you can see it says mom plus dad plus whiskers is a family whose members are the mom and dad. And then they have a, an array of pets who's at the, at the moment's value is just whiskers. Okay. Good. Now we can go ahead and take this family uh, that's got mom and dad and whiskers and add a son to it like the sun that was defined in here and to do that you can see our family has an operator in here that you can plus a person so you can say a family plus the sun it will be a new family all right so here it's just printed you can see it says with sun so we take the family that we created from here and we plus the sun and it says mom dad whiskers and son is equal to this uh this statement in here i think you get the point i mean we're just playing with values right now okay now we do the same thing and we add the daughter to the family with the plus so we take the with son and we say now add the daughter as well and it'll be this it will be a huge family mom dad whiskers son and daughter is equal to this you can see whiskers is still the only pet in here okay uh, and also we're gonna go ahead uh, and we say okay now we want to test adding a person to a pet and see what happens because remember when we added whiskers to the family it was when it was already a family okay but now we want to take the son and add whiskers to that son and see what happens here so we take the son and we say and whiskers and the result is going to be a family in which the only member is the son and the only pet is whiskers and the result is printed in here okay and also as the last example let's just take uh, the two families uh, which are here with daughter and also son with whiskers these both are families and let's just merge them together okay so we say with son and whiskers is with daughter and son with whiskers so we're just pretty much merging two families together and then the result is going to be printed in here it's a huge family as well okay so and uh, this is quite difficult to explain like line by line but i think you get the point really all we're doing is just playing with data we're just playing with persons and families and pets just three classes and some custom operators okay good we're done with example seven let's go to example eight example eight dot dart main function in here and let's just stop fs watch and say example eight like this and save our file so we can start working on example eight now this one's going to be a lot smaller example okay 
Uh, and up to this point, what we've done so far has been that we created uh, extensions on existing classes in order to add operators to them. However, the point of this example, which is the last example of this chapter, is to say that operators don't necessarily have to be created on extensions. They can actually be created in the original class if you have source code for it. Okay, so let's create a class in here and say person. And, and this person has final int int age. And we can go and create a constructor for this. And let's say that this is a required this, uh, sorry, required name parameter. And let's create two string for it as well. Let's see if this can complete it for us. Yes, now we have that. So let's create a, a little operator on this class. And the goal of this operator is that we want to take a, an instance of person and add an age to it. Okay, so we want to be able to say, um, let's write some code in here. Let me say uh, me this year. Uh, and I'm going to say me this year is an instance of person at age 30. Now, I what I want to say is to say, um, okay, I want to print that to the console like this. And then I want to go ahead and say me in one year it should be equal to me this year plus one. So this is what I want to achieve. I want to take an instance of person and plus it an integer. Okay, so let's define that uh, uh, operator in here. So we say the result is a person. The operator is a plus operator and its parameter is an int. Okay, and we say int age. And you can see what we're doing in here is saying, uh, well, create a new person, take this age and plus the other age. That's it, really. So then this up, uh, this uh, code is going to work just magically, okay? Because it refers to this operator in here. Now that we have that, we can also go ahead and print it to the console like this, and you can see the result says me this year is thirty, and me next year is uh, going to be thirty-one years old. And that was really the goal of this uh, example in that operators don't necessarily have to be created inside extensions, all right? And they can be inside the original class as well. So. There was a lot we talked about. I don't know how long I've been talking talking for. I think it's been more than an hour, but I think this chapter was really necessary because a lot of people have difficulty understanding how extensions work together with uh, uh, operators. And uh, sorry that I sometimes have to say operators a little bit slowly. It's just because when I say it really fast, it becomes like a weird word for me. So I try to say operators sometimes. Um, but apart from that, I really hope that you enjoyed this chapter. If you have any questions, just let me know either in the comments at the bottom of this video or just better yet, join the Discord server, the link to which you can find in the playlist and also at the bottom of this video in the description, you can find the Discord link as well. Join the Discord server that we have. And if you have any questions, you can just format your code a little bit better in Discord than you can in the YouTube comments. So hope you enjoyed this chapter. See you in the next one.